CNN just did something heartbreaking to cover up for Antifa. Yes, Danny Gold for Liberty Writers News reports that we all know that CNN has gone ahead and thrown all decency and journalistic standards out the window, but now, yet again, they just managed to top themselves. I can't believe it. Now, apparently they wrote an article, an interesting article over the weekend about how Antifa believes that violence equals peace and that it showed itself in Charlottesville. However, it didn't take long for Antifa leaders to come out and demand that CNN change their story. Here's the actual headline. Okay. Unmasking the leftist Antifa movement. Activists seek peace through violence. Okay. Antifa freaked out when they saw this. They complained. And then they just, CNN caved in like the good leftist media they are. And they change it to unmasking the leftist Antifa movement with an editor's note that the story's been updated to clarify that counter-protesters say they're not to blame for the, violent in the, Char the violence at the Charlottesville protests. The story's headline has also been updated. Yeah, so when triggered Antifa snowflakes raise their voice, CNN bends over backwards and changes it. Okay, can you imagine if the, if if, if uh, conservatives made you know raise hell like that? They could care less, man. They could care less. So as you saw there, CNN's original title for the story was "Unmasking the Leftist Antifa Movement: Activists Seek Peace Through Violence." Anyway, you know, of course, it was a biased article, all right. Um, and then they change it. So Antifa member freaked out. The triggered snowflakes started melting. And uh, said, you know, Charlottesville's not our fault. But, of course, they had, they had baseball bats, right? There are peaceful protesters with baseball bats. Like I said, they're going to go play softball after their protest. So CNN bent over, lent them a hand, changed the headline to Unmasking the Leftist Antifa Movement. And then, of course, like I, so I showed you there, the, uh, the editor's note updated to clar clarify that the violence wasn't their fault. So, of course, yeah, you know, Antifa fighting white supremacists at Charlottesville, okay, but most of the time, they're beating up innocent Trump supporters, okay? That's what they do best. They, the conservatives, anybody that actually disagrees with them. At, at uh, Charlottesville, just happen to be white supremacists at the moment. Anyway, disgusting. Another tactic by CNN uncovered, siding with the violent radical left. What are your thoughts? Comment below. Subscribe for updates. If you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up and share this report on your social networks. And let's hold CNN accountable for supporting. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Assuming you saw the television over the weekend, the screaming, the craziness, the lunatic hell-bent on murdering an entire crowd of people with his car. Everything about what happened in Charlottesville over the weekend was awful. Maybe the worst part was the feeling you got as you watched it, that things were completely out of control. This is what chaos looks like. One man swinging a Confederate flag like a club, his opponent trying to burn him with a homemade flamethrower. All of this happening on a city street at midday and no one trying to stop them. What country was this? Where were the authorities? What happened to the police? Is this America? Our colleague Doug McElway was there in Charlottesville on Sunday and he had that same question. When the tear gas started to fly, thrown by protesters, the police themselves began to evacuate that. I asked the guy who was in charge, I said, where are you going? He said, we're leaving. It's too dangerous. They had an opportunity to nip this thing in the bud, and they chose not to. Multiple videos show marchers, countermarchers, and members of the press being beaten with cops nowhere to be seen. One video shows law enforcement hurting a group of white nationalists directly toward a knot of left-wing counter-protesters with predictable results. None of this seemed to bother elected officials in the state. Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe said this morning that cops there did, quote, a magnificent job. The over-his-head mayor of Charlottesville agreed with that. Unfortunately, there is a long history in this country of politicians, for whatever reason, preventing the police from doing their jobs in times of crisis. Way back in 1991, New York Mayor David Dinkins let the Crown Heights riots rage for three days before allowing police to restore order there. You've seen similar scenes recently in Ferguson, in Baltimore, Berkeley. Police stood aside while demonstrations turned into riots. And now in Charlottesville, a woman died after authorities allowed chaos to spread. 
Political violence is a virus. Once it flares up in one place, it is likely to spread elsewhere. Cowardly politicians are not just hurting their own communities when they allow this. They're putting the rest of us, our country, at risk. Dan Bongino once served on the NYPD and in the Secret Service, and he joins us tonight. Dan, what I find so striking about what happened in Charlottesville is there's really no debate about it. This is not something that the right is saying or the left is saying. They're both saying it. The ACLU is saying it. The marchers with the Confederate flags are saying it. The police stood by and allowed violence to accelerate. Why would they do that? Yeah, Tucker, it's perplexing. And I think the reason you're seeing this kind of ideological unity on both sides of the aisle is because, let's be honest, free speech is meaningless if some people take free speech to mean I'm free to punch you in the face as you're speaking. That's not free speech, okay? That's just straight up hardcore criminality and violence. Why is this phenomenon of the Stephanie Rawlings Blake, the mayor of Baltimore, and her, 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 you know, her give them space to destroy phenomenon happening? I have no good answer other than. Uh, a let them vent theory? Is it one of these socio psycho babble theories that if you let people go out there and they're going to just get tired of breaking stuff or punching people after a while? I, I have no good explanation because there isn't one. This is pure, unadulterated idiocy. And one thing on this, Tucker, to be clear about this. This is not the rank and file cops. I think you and I both know that the cops know exactly how to right. do their job. This is politicians and police managers beholden to politicians who have made these awful decisions to let them vent or, quote, give them space to destroy, as was said in Baltimore. It, it's such a betrayal of the rest of us. I mean, we obviously through our tax dollars support law enforcement, but we also give them enormous latitude, a ton of power. We let them carry guns in public and use them all in the belief that when it comes down to it, they will maintain order and protect us. And so yeah. I, I just wonder where's the, and I believe you that it, the police are, they're for order, they're against this, but where, where's the police union standing up to these politicians and saying, you know, we need to be allowed to do our jobs? Yeah, I'm not sure. And this is what's really disturbing is this isn't an isolated incident. We've seen this repeatedly. Right. We saw it in Chicago at anti-Trump rallies. Like you said, Baltimore, we saw it in Ferguson. And another thing about this, why this is so dangerous, this stand down mentality from politicians or let them vent mentality. Tucker's social media has changed everything when it comes to these these right. riots and these Antifa people and these national white nationalists, whatever they are, these these Nazi sympathizers. It has changed everything. It has made it so easy to coordinate a group of people dedicated to one thing and one thing only violence. You know, 30, 40 years ago, if Walter Cronkite didn't talk about it on the evening news, Nobody knew about it. Right now, you get a guy, a fringe operator with 100,000 Twitter followers who puts out, meet me on the corner of 47th and Myrtle, and we're just going to go beat the snot out of some Antifa people or vice versa. An Antifa person says that. Next thing you know, you got a full scale riot on your hands. It's a new era for policing and politicians and managers better get it through their heads or you're going to see more of this. Well, I think you already have it. I think later in the show, I think we have video. Someone just sent it to me of a statue being pulled down, some kind of Confederate war memorial. And I think it's in Durham, North Carolina. And you watch as this group of people, I think it just happened, gather around this, attach a strap to the head of the of of the statue and pull it down. Now, I'm sure it'll be applauded by the left. They don't like these statues. That's fine. Well, there it is right there. Watch this. I think this just happened. OK, there it is now. I'm not exactly sure where this is, but it's clearly a public space. There are no police to be seen. And my question is, if a crowd of people with strong political views can destroy a statue, why can't they yeah. set your house on fire? I mean, in other words, why doesn't this stuff accelerate into something really dangerous? Why wouldn't it? Well, that's a great question. And Tucker, it almost happened on Berkeley, on the Berkeley campus, where they yeah. literally almost set the building on fire. You know what needs to happen here? You need to go back to the old Ruli Giuliani approach after Crown Heights. You mentioned the David Dinkins era before with the Crown yeah. Heights riots. I remember that. I was a cop in the Giuliani era. And the Giuliani theorem was you throw a bottle, you're going to jail. You, the guy behind you throws a bottle, he goes to jail too. Nobody gets a free pass. And you know what happens? People learn really quickly that that's not going to go down that way in New York. 
You go to New York, you have the absolute right to free speech and protest. You have absolutely no right, though, as well, to launch a bottle, to rip down a statue, to burn someone's house down, or to beat the snot out of someone at a rally. And that has to be some kind of national police effort on behalf of police management and politicians to set that new standard. That no more with this. You, are, you have the, I'm, I'm a free speech absolutist on this, but free speech does not include physical assault and the throwing of objects at people. Absolutely not. Of course. And if you're a politician, if you're the mayor of a city, spare me your political lectures. Your first job is to keep your city orderly and safe. And if you can't do that, get off the stage. Dan, thanks for joining us.